Good afternoon. I am Rich Nass. I am the Executive Vice President of Open Systems Media. I lead the Embedded Computing Design team. As you can see right there, we're Embedded Computing Design, and we, we do all that cool stuff that's over my other shoulder. I am here today with Vabish Brathan. He is with Infineon, Product Manager. How are you doing, Vabish? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for uh, having me here. Um, thank you, Rich. Good. So you are here because you have a pretty exciting new product that we want to talk about. Um, something new in the CapSense series, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, we have been in the uh, Tech HMI market for more than two decades. Uh, and then we have a, an exciting technology and a product that addresses some of the uh, challenges in the evolving market in this segment. Um, so happy to share that the details here. Okay. I have about a thousand questions I want to ask you, but I have a feeling that... Um, you're gonna answer my questions with your presentation. So I'm gonna wait, but one of those is what is the value proposition for somebody who's a developer out there, an Infineon customer, potential Infineon customer. So uh, those are the types of things that I wanna hear as, as we go through this. Uh, great question. So uh, like I said, since we've been in the market for about two decades, you know, when you bring in a new technology to the market, we have thought about the exact same things. You know, what do we want to bring to our customers from the table? And what do we want to bring to the end consumers? And, and also we are in the time of uh, decarbonization and digitization, right? On the, on this, uh, at this time of uh, the, in, in this planet and how we want to contribute to that and uh, how we want to revolutionize the digitization. We have thought about those and the, our answer is this, the fifth generation capacity sensing technology. So I can, I'm more than happy to walk you through some of the value props uh, with my slides. Um, PSOC 4000T, that is a device we are going to talk about today. And um, this is a device that is in the, available at the PSOC 4 um, family of MCUs. Uh, 4000T is basically an entry-level uh, PSOC 4 MCU that has uh, capacity sensing touch enabled. Um, uh, like I said, uh, we have been in the market for two decades and we are a, number one player in uh, in uh, touch HMI solution space. Um, we have a significant presence in the various markets across um, and shipped uh, billions of devices uh, till date. Um, and we have had uh, four generations of capacity sensing solutions uh, till date, um, addressing various different uh, challenges in the evolving market. The last year, uh, we announced the fifth generation CapSense with a PSOC 4100S Max device. Um, and uh, this year, we are announcing an upgraded version of that fifth generation uh, with a PSOC 4000T device. Uh, let's uh, dive into uh, what this technology brings in. Um, first of all, uh, I think uh, there is a laundry list of improvements and enhancement that we did with the technology. But I think uh, I can, uh, at a high level, categorize this into uh, three different uh, buckets. Uh, one, uh, we are bringing in something called uh, a multi-sense. Uh, what I meant by that, uh, the capacity touch HMI generally has been around, uh, you know, self-cap and mutual cap sensing. So we are supporting that for sure. And besides that, we are able to support, uh, you know, features like inductive sensing, uh, which is a feature uh, that enables uh, touch, surf uh, touch, you know, user interface over a metallic surfaces or 100% liquid tolerant uh, HMI, HMI solutions that you can take under the water and still operate. You know, these are some of the challenges the capacity technology faces today. And that's, uh, that's what we are addressing with inductive sensing. Um, so the um, along with the capacity self and mutual inductive complements uh, the, the technology uh, where the capacity generally finds it uh, difficult to address. Um, besides this, uh, the flexible analog front end, um, we are also capable able to use that the flexible analog front end to expand the sensing to other areas. You know, this uh, this front end is fully flexible such that it can measure current resistance and impedance kind of things so that you can integrate some of your analog sensors directly with the same front end, you know, that, that uh, more bore optimization, uh, cost optimization, right? So that's the multi-sense. Now, coming to the uh, the uh, the signal to noise ratio or the performance aspect, um, if you see the market is moving towards a lot of wearable uh, battery powered products, tiny products, and and these devices, as the size shrinks, um, you can see the uh, the area available or the real estate available on the product for placing sensors are shrinking. You know, for take an example of TWS uh, earbuds, these are shrinking in size, right? So you want to be able to sense the user interaction with the tiny sensors, and that's where uh, the high uh, signal to noise ratio is helpful. 
because you can sense the same, you can enable the same level of user experience with a smaller sensor. This also allows to, you know, mitigate the noise. For example, uh, noise from such as uh, other systems, such as uh, RF antennas and things like that, that may exist in the system. Like, you know, as a, you shrink the size of the product, the, uh, the Bluetooth antennas and things like that comes even closer to the sensor that can create interference. So that uh, 10x higher SNR or signal to noise ratio uh, helps you solve these challenges. And besides this, this also you know, greatly improves uh, how uh, the sensing or capacity of HMI can work in various other environments where noise may be a challenge, uh, such as home appliance products, uh, wall powered products, you know, um, uh, power machine, uh, power tools, and et cetera, where an external noise, both conducted and radiated noises, may be a challenge. Uh, the, the improved uh, signal to noise ratio can help with that. Um, and, and the last, I think, um, and most important uh, is the, the power reduction. While we are able to support the both uh, multi-sense and the SNR, improved SNR, we are able to cut down the power consumption by 10x on this product. Um, this is both in the standby mode and as well as in the active mode. You know, depending upon your product, some products you will find the standby current is more imp more important to uh, overall uh, uh, power optimization. Because you know, for example, home appliance product that may be power you know plugged into the wall, but you use it once in a week, kind of right, uh, where the standby current is important. Um, other products such as wearable smartwatches, for example. Uh, that, that, that you use very frequently, more frequently. And uh, there, the active current plays a more dominant role in optimizing the overall power strategy uh, for the product. So we have optimized or uh, reduced uh, the both the standby and the active uh, current uh, by a order of 10x. Uh, I will show you some of the case studies and, and measurements uh, on this space, but these are the three key uh, enhancements that we bring in on this technology. Um, so uh, what does it actually bring um, to the consumers, right, um, or their customers? One, with the um, the power and performance improvement, uh, like I said, you're able to shrink the size of the sensor, so smaller form factor, enable smaller form factor. Um, with the you know, a low power improvement, you're able to bring in more uh, or increase the battery life of your product, right? Um, such as uh, the two examples that I have here, um, you can see this uh, the big uh, green graphs there. The, the light shade green graph is there. Uh, those are the um, the power consumed by the HMI subsystem in the products that is available on the market today. Uh, and they consume on a smartwatch about you know 2.4 milliamps in active domain. On an earbud, it's 800 microamps. Uh, uh, if we introduce the fifth generation technology and uh, put a piece of 4000D in, in that uh, schematics, uh, which is what we have done in this case to study, the, the power consumption goes by goes down by an order of magnitude of 10X or more, right? The 2.4 milliamps becomes a 170, 167 microamps. What this does is uh, it can add nearly one extra day of battery life to your product just by replacing the, uh, the touchscreen controller on your smartwatch. Right, um, and if you look at the the combine the the SNR improvement and power consumption improvement together, you know the uh, the SNR you will get per a microam of current that you burn, compared to the solution out there in the market, it gets you like 125 times better. That's because you get a 10x on the power and you get a 10x on the SNR. So that's 100x, right? So in this real scenario, it is slightly better than 100x, 125 times better. That's what that's what it is. Uh, um, this uh, this uh, this we bring in into the the wearable uh, hearable space uh, with this product. How we are able to do it? Uh, this is uh, done through uh, something called uh, you know always on you know autonomous always on sensing technology, which uh, allows the uh, the our chip to remain in the deep sleep state, uh, which consumes about a couple of microamps, and then the test subsystem can be turned on in that domain and to perform the scanning or sensing of the, the sensors. You know, this can be one sensor or can be group of sensors, you know, a, a entire frame can be done in that mode autonomously by the sensing subsystem. So that's how we are able to um, reduce the power. And then at the end of the scan, at the end of the frame, the CPU can be turned on um, to perform uh, some of the uh, the data processing activities, such as you know, if you want to detect a gesture, uh, such as you know, such as gesture that requires a firm you know software activity, uh, for a short amount of time, the CPU or the chip can be turned on. So here in the top uh, right corner, uh, the graph basically dotted line basically shows how it 
the uh, solutions out there in the market today operates right for every scan the cpu or the chip has to be uh, woken up consuming much higher current uh, and then the uh, you know the data processing is done at the end of the frame uh, but the uh, what this uh, the 4000 d does with autonomous sensing it never wakes up the entire chip uh, rather it basically turns on the uh, only the touch up system that consumes a very little current for the entire frame and then if there is a user uh, touch activated, then it actually turns on the CPU to for the data processing. So that's how we are able to uh, lower the uh, lower the power. Um, talking about the SNR, right? Um, um, what is the SNR? Uh, signal to noise ratio. It basically says um, how well you can differentiate a, a, your a user touch or a signal from all other noise, the unwanted signals, right? All other noise that exists out there. And these noise can come from like, you know, the environment such as, you know, uh, the wall powered uh, noise, you know, coming wall, noise coming from wall power, wall outlets, uh, could be coming from you know, a motor operating in your system, such as, you know, washer and dryer, when you turn on the motor, that creates a lot of noise. Could be a mobile phone that is sitting next to your, uh, you know, the, the product uh, that is emitting the uh, radiated noise, or could be uh, the antennas and RF products inside your product itself, such as, you know, smart watches, you know, which has a, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or even the you know the mobile connectivity, right? So this uh, this could be various different types that are affecting the noise. So the signal to noise ratio is how reliably you can differentiate the touch signal uh, from these unwanted spurious uh, noises. Um, with uh, something called the ratio metric sensing, um, what we have been able to do here, right? Um, top graph on the top graph on the right uh, right side shows the uh, the signal to noise ratio comparison with respect to uh, the previous gen. Um, the 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 maroon graph shows the previous gen and the green graph shows the uh, the the four thousand D performance. You can see two things there. One, the the sensor capacitance or the dynamic range itself has increased. You know, from zero to fifty picofarad, it has gone to zero to two hundred pico, uh, plus picofarad. So the dynamic range is much wider. So you can have a varieties of type of sensors now. Um, and while we are doing that, we are able to improve the SNR uh, also in those each of those uh, you know the input range. We are able to improve the SNR. Um, the below two graphs basically shows uh, a representative of uh, association of uh, you know uh, the conducted noise that comes through power line or radiated noise that is coupled to the sensor uh, through the uh, sensor interface. Um, uh, in this case, the 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 uh, the uh, orange maroon um, graph shows the previous gen, and the dark uh, line, and then the the uh, blue shows the uh, the the, the PSOC 4000T performance. The noise in the both cases, the noise induced in the product or affected by the um, uh, the noise induced in the product is much lesser compared to the previous gen. And this is coming because of the some of the architectural enhancement that we've done in the fifth generation technology. Um, coming more, um, some of these products uh, you wanted to be used um, in the in a wet conditions, right? In a smartwatch, for example, uh, that you may be swimming and things like that. Uh, earbuds, TWC earbuds uh, that you're wearing, um, and you may be wet running, or maybe uh, you came out of a shower and with, you have a wet hair and things like that. Making the uh, you know, if you have used some of these products, uh, you already know that uh, you know. Uh, making these touch screens or touch sensing buttons on this product is very challenging, right? Um, so we we, um, um, we have improved that performance there so that you can use these uh, touch HMI on this product in a more challenging environment such as this. Um, the top graph here, right, shows basically three scenarios where the sensor performance in a dry condition, right, no water, and then the second is a uh, you know micro droplets like you know spraying the water on on the on the um, earbuds, and then a third one is a big giant droplet on the on the sensor, right? And you can see um, the existing solution. It it works um, uh, reasonably well in the dry and and uh, you know the spray you know and the the micro droplets, right? Because with a with a, with a big droplet. Uh, you see that it loses about 60% of signal. So now, if you lose a 60% of signal, uh, it uh, you know it only means one thing. You know that solution is not reliable and cannot work in that scenario, right? Because if you lose a more than 50% of your valid data, <clears throat> um, the bottom graph basically shows the uh, 4000T performance in all these scenarios. Um, the 4000T with an improved sensing engine 
um the the exact same condition we only lose the less than 8% of signal which means that you know in all the scenarios it can very reliably work so uh, be ready to use the products in uh, in this challenging environments um with the capacity sensing you know once the 4000t is in those products um some of the other examples um with uh, nsnr improvement we are able to bring in you know proximity sensing right um capacity sensing in general um um or the capacity proximity is in general uh, is a directionless, right? Um, you have a sensor, and usually the the sensor detects your hand or objects uh, from a, a, any side around this uh, sensor, right? Um, what we are able to do here with an improved performance, we are able to bring in a directivity. So now you can detect and identify which side the hand is coming from, right? And you can customize your user experience, right? You can make the proximity sensitive only from a particular direction, for example, only from the top or only from the side or, you know, and so on. Um, and it also helps you enable some of the intuitive interfaces, such as, you know, touchless um, uh, interfaces. You know, if you're in a public domain, uh, you're in an airport or you know, you're in an office space, uh, and maybe you don't want to touch the interface to uh, you know to to stop the jump spreads. So that's where you can use the touchless interface, where you can point your finger to um, the sensors and then activate it. Um, the reason why we are able to do that with the proximity one, it it, it I can bring in a directivity. Second, it can also detect the both um, uh, distance um, as well as the the movement. So if your finger moves front and back, we can also detect that. Uh, and so that basically we can detect a, a, a simulation of a touch uh, on this proximity sensing. <clears throat> um, you can find this in a various different scenarios, you know, a, a be in the public domain or maybe in a kitchen hood, um, you know, you're cooking and your hands are dirty, you don't want to touch the interface, you want to use the touchless uh, uh, feature on the range hood to control, turn on the light and so on, right? So option, you know, the features, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, usefulness of such feature is, uh, um, plenty, right? So here is a summary of what I said. You know, this basically shows uh, a comparison between our own previous gen and the fifth gen 4000T. Uh, overall, uh, what I was saying here, uh, significant improvement on the uh, signal to noise ratio, um, power consumption, and noise immunity, um, as well as bringing uh, liquid tolerance, proximity sensing, etc. Right? All of these are possible because of the uh, the latest generation. Um, technology and the fundamental architecture changes that we have made into, into the CapSense, uh, you know, sensing architecture. Uh, to put this into perspective, uh, here is the uh, a chart that um, compares the, the, the competition, uh, some of the competitions uh, for this product. Um, and I'm not going to name the competition here, but you can see a um, lot of green, uh, you know, lines in the, in the 4000T um, with respect to the number of sensing channels, um, with respect to resolution, with respect to the power consumption and, uh, and longevity and, and so on, right? And we are also positioned to support the customers globally um, with a vast presence of Infineon around the globe. Um, so overall, I think the... Uh, the uh, the fifth generation capsons, uh, the low power capsons, is uh, is a one step ahead or a miles ahead of the competition with respect to innovation and value that it brings in. Um, here's my um, uh, second last slide. Um, what is uh, how does this device look like? Um, this is an MCU um, that has an ARM, ARM uh, CM0 uh, Cortex M0 Plus uh, processor. Uh, and a couple of communication lines, you know, SCB can be used as a, you know, ITC, SPI, UART, etc. You know, SCB stands for Serial Communication Blocks. And uh, other blocks that you say they're in the digital domain is a TCPWM, a timer counter PWM kind of configurable digital block. Then the device also has a 21 GPIOs, out of which uh, practically you can use the 16 of them as a sensors. Uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> These sensors can be configurable as uh, self, mutual, inductive, and, and, and so on and so forth. The same sensors can can be reconfigured in, in any fashion that you want. Uh, remaining five uh, five pins, three of them you will need for a communication line. I'm assuming, um, um, you know, for I to C, you know, two uh, wire interface for the I to C, and one for uh, interrupt pin. Uh, other two pins uh, you need for a, an external uh, uh, reference capacitors that is needed for the sensing. So that's how um, the 21 pins are being used on this device. Um, I talked about some of the applications already, um, but I think the uh, 
these are some of the areas that we can uh, the capacity sensing can address uh, or the 4000t can address uh, definitely hmi on these uh, products that operates on uh, battery power and requires uh, higher lower power lower power and higher performance uh, needs to work in a small form factor that is where i think the 4000t will find the best value um um, and I think not only HMI, this can be used for, you know, such as in-ear detection uh, or wear detection, right? Um, like if you want to know some of the products, whether you are wearing it or not, right? Uh, be that a headphone or be that a, at a VR headset, right? Um, uh, if you want to detect the user is wearing it or not, and depending upon that, whether you want to, you know, turn off or turn on the, you know, different interfaces on that product, um, the, the capacity sensing can be used uh, in those kind of applications as well. Um, how do we get started? Um, this kit, um, this is going to be supported. The PSOC 4000D is going to be supported in our uh, Modest Toolbox um, software uh, tool set um, that has uh, um, everything that you need. You know, the a GUI based configurator to configure the number of sensors that you want, a, a tuner interface that allows you to debug and also uh, middlewares and drivers and PDLs uh, and BSPs to support the kit. So all the software pieces. I think you can um, write a, co a, a develop an application um, on 4000D probably with the 10 lines of code um, that you will find in a code example. So the easiest way to get started is to get a kit um, that you can order online and download the Modest Toolbox uh, 3.1. Um, that will get you started. Um, here is a bunch of collaterals um, or documentations that you will find if you want to learn more about the uh, 4000 t uh, and its uh, features. Um, thank you. Very good, Vibish. Um, You answered pretty much every question that I had when we going into this presentation, but um, you talked about the power level a lot and you talked about how it can be reduced, but you didn't give actual, actual numbers. What sort of power levels are we talking about? Um, so usually, um, a, a test screen on a smartwatch, for example, right, takes about you know, 2,400 milli microamps today. We are able to cut down that to less than 200 microamps, you know. Um, so that's uh, that's a level of enhanced improvement you know, uh, that we are talking about with respect to the power. Um, essentially, what I'm saying, you can run a touch screen of a size of a, you know, one and a half to two inch with about like a 200 microamps of current. Uh, in an active mode. That is when a user is touching on the screen you know, and moving across the icons at that point in time, you will find that the um, the, uh, the, uh, the touch screen controller consumes less than 200 microns of uh, current in the active domain. Very good. And then near the end, you said to somebody, um, the best thing to do is to get yourself one of these kits to get started. How does somebody actually get one of these kits? Uh, both the the Modest Toolbox software and the kits, uh, both are available in the Infineon.com. Um, you can download the Modest Toolbox from the Infineon website uh, and get the the order of the kits from the Infineon website. Awesome. That's Vibish Barathan. He is a product manager with Infineon, and I'm Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Thank you, Vibish. Uh, thank you, Rich.